Welcome to Search the Scriptures. Today we are on seat number four in John's Gospel. And in study four, we cover John chapter number two. And in today's study, we come, come to the first of seven miracles in John's Gospel. It's the miracle of Jesus turning the water into wine at the wedding feast in Canaan. He actually makes about 150 gallons of wine. That's a lot of wine. And it was the very best wine that they had that day at the wedding reception. It plays out this way. They had ran, ran, they'd ran out of wine at the festivities. And Jesus' mother said to the servants there of the master of the feast, they said, you know what, do whatever my son tells you to do, and uh, things will turn out okay. And Jesus has this interesting thing that he says to his mother in John chapter 2, beginning with the fourth verse. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my time has not yet come. As we go through the Gospel of John, remember what Jesus said at that wedding feast. My time has not yet come. His time was coming. By the end of John's Gospel, he makes statements like, The time has come. We know eventually, he says from the cross, It is finished. But right here, he tells his mother, At a wedding feast, my time has not yet come. Essentially, he's saying, this isn't my wedding, but my wedding is coming. One day I will receive my bride, and that bride is the church. But for right now, this isn't my time. But it's interesting when she still goes ahead and tells him, you know, do whatever it is that my son tells you to do. And it says in verse number six that nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. So standing here nearby were these stone water jars used for ceremonial washing. It's interesting to me that Jesus Rather than taking the empty vessels the wine had been in previously and was being dispensed from, he chose new vessels, ceremonial vessels. And I, I wonder why were they just sitting there not being used? Why were they empty? Why were they even available? And Jesus takes these empty vessels, fills them up with new wine. It's interesting what happens here in John chapter number 2. You have Jesus taking something empty and filling it. And you have at the end of this chapter, Jesus taking something that's full and emptying it. I find that interesting. He takes empty ceremony and he fills it with new wine. When we get to the end of this chapter, beginning in the middle of this chapter, chapter number 12, after this he went down to Capernaum with his mother and brothers and his disciples. They stayed there a few days. But when it was time, in verse 13, for the Jewish Passover, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. And in the temple courts, he found men selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and others sitting at tables exchanging money. Now, you know the story. He makes a whip out of cords, and he drives out the money changers, and he drives out all of their birds, and he drives out all of their goats, and he drives out the rest of the livestock. That is in there. And it says in verse 16, to, he says to those who sold doves, he said, Get these out of here. How dare you turn my father's house into a market? So he is 
highly upset at what is going on here. In other instances of the cleansing of the temple, we get this uh, picture of what he is actually doing. He is in the court reserved for the Gentiles, the non-Jewish believers, other gospels uh, and, tra and, and uh, translations and uh, earlier, early manuscripts have things that say, he drove them out and he said, my father's house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. And he was in that area where it was reserved for other non-Jews to come and to gain some access there to the temple. But they had filled it. They had filled the entry point with stuff that God hadn't intended to be there. And that had crowded out the mission that that part of the temple was reserved for. To allow others to begin to approach God and to come into a kingdom and a community of faith. I wonder how many times in the church we have things that are crowding out the mission of God. That make it convenient for us because we don't have to go elsewhere to get what we need to get for the sacrifice. It's all right there at our fingertips. And this is the problem with the church in America. We want everything right there and everything easy and everything accessible. But the problem with that, when it becomes accessible and easy and understandable to us, what about the world that is outside that we are desperately trying to reach? I wonder if there isn't a lot of empty ceremony that we need to fill with a new wine and listen to what Jesus tells us to do. And I wonder what things in the church we have filled with things that we need to empty or take away. That's what I get from John chapter number two. Number two. Empty ceremony filled with new wine and filled church stuff that needs to be emptied so that the lost can come in. I hope this study today has been a blessing to you. I hope you're learning something from God's Word. I hope that today I've given you something to really think about as you consider the ceremony in your life and the religious so-called religious things and convenience that you've filled it with. What do you need to empty and what you need do you need to fill? I hope this study has been a blessing to you today. Hope you're having a great day so far and may God richly bless the rest of your day.